Hello viewers, today I'm going to show you how to oxidize the terminal alcohol or primary alcohol to terminal aldehyde um, by using PCC or pyridinium chlorochromate. It is an oxidizing agent. So if you have a primary alcohol or terminal alcohol, you can easily make that compound to the primary aldehyde or terminal aldehyde here this reaction required the PCC or pyridinium chlorochromate compound in DCM and stir at room temperature for two hours then you have to do the workup PCC means pyridinium chlorochromate Let's see what is the structure of PCC. Uh, a group can be anything like cyclohexyl group or different functional group. This compound also, this reaction also tolerant with the ester. Like if you have the ester group in your compound somewhere, that can be also stay intact. It will not be hampered with this reaction. So PCC or pyridinium chlorochromate, let's see the structure. So pyridinium ion with the chlorochromate counter ion. Here the chromium oxidation state is plus 6. And after oxidizing, or after the reaction, oxidation reaction, the chromium oxidation state will convert to chromium 4 plus. So here, PCC itself get reduced, like reduction happened for its uh, PCC, but is it PCC oxidize the alcohol to aldehyde. So chromium 6 plus to chromium 4 plus, that means chromium gain electron two electron to give chromium four plus that means it is getting reduced so after oxidation pieces itself get reduced to oxidize primary alcohol aldehyde let's see the mechanism how this reaction happen so here is the primary alcohol this is the chlorochromate counter ion with pyridinium So oxygen lone pair electron goes to the chromium and that double bonded oxygen becomes single bonded and I am drawing the pyridinium counter ion oxygen chromium and single bond. Now let's see the next step it will form an adduct oxygen will be positive and chromium double bond oxygen O minus another O minus and chlorine now in this step this proton will be transferred to one of the negative oxygen so this step is called proton transfer step so proton will be transferred Any one of this um, of this negative oxygen will abstract this proton and this electron will go to the oxygen oxygen will be neutral 
by this process let's draw the structure of uh, I forgot to draw the counter and peridinium ion assume that everywhere it will be staying so even if I miss the counter ion peridinium ion so this oxygen from the cyclohexane group hexyl group uh, become neutral and one of the oxygen will be staying negative and another oxygen obstruct the hydrogen to form the hydroxyl group now you can see the chlorine in the structure that chlorine will be kicked out so that um, oxygen negative oxygen will give the electron to make the double bond and ultimately chlorine will be kicked out so we can write the structure as that and you can see like CH2 next to oxygen I am showing two hydrogen here because the kicked out chlor chloride ion take one of this hydrogen out from that carbon ultimately that chloride ion is now attacking the one of the hydrogen from this CH2 carbon and that hydrogen electron is giving to the oxygen to make the double bond and ultimately oxygen chromium bond is breaking down and it is forming the aldehyde that cyclohexyl aldehyde I'll show the full picture once I'm done with the writing so this is the aldehyde and remaining the chromium dihydroxy double bonded oxygen chromium adduct uh, not adduct actually chromium compound and that is like chromium 4 and the pyridinium chloride so the chloride take the hydrogen as an ACL so if you want to write ACL pyridinium hydrochloride then chromium one of the chromium hydroxyl can be negative showing negative so I am showing the negative uh, the mechanism again so here if you follow the arrow how it is happening uh, the proton transfer is happening here this oxygen is taking this proton and this is stable proton transfer and counter ion pyridinium always will be there if I forget to draw so here also I forgot to draw okay now see that now this chloro this negative oxygen will be making double bond here um, and the previous proton transfer make the hydroxyl and this negative oxygen double bond and chlorine will be kicked out and that chloride ion will take part to abstract one of the proton from the CH2 and ultimately that hydrogen electron goes to the oxygen and oxygen chromium bond will be break down uh, will be broken and ultimately the final product will be aldehyde now let's see the total <coughs> scenario in the mechanism I, i'll be moving from here to show you how the total mechanism looks like yeah i forgot to draw the pyridinium ion as a counter ion it, it will stay each step and at the final step it will form the pyridinium proton like pyridinium chloride now see the total mechanism here i am showing the full mechanism so if you have any question about the mechanism please comment uh, or ask in the comment section i'll answer the question so here the aldehyde formed and chromium dihydroxy chromium oxide formed as a chromium for oxidation instead and the pre pyridinium chloride um, those are byproduct and those are water soluble so that can be done let's see how to set up the reaction now so here I have taken dichloromethane anhydrous bottle sealed bottle so under nitrogen or argon gas you see the gas is bubbling so um, it is under gas like in inert atmosphere so i am taking the um, certain amount of the solvent for my reaction 
and my reaction required like around 40 to 45 milliliter of the dcm and high dose dcm so i'm taking around 45 milliliter of the dcm from this bottle and uh, once it is done then i'll add that solvent in a round bottom flask which was oven dried overnight and after that this flask was flame dried also now i'm adding the solvent here in the flask now i'm measuring the pyridinium chlorochromate uh, this is the pyridinium chlorochromate so for my reaction it will require like 5.37 gram or something like this so here i'm measuring my pyridinium chlorochromate in a weighing paper with the balance analytical balance yeah you can see the required 5.3763 milli gram now i'm adding that compound in dcm there is there was only dcm in the flask so immediately the um i am degassing it quick degassing while the gas is on so now i'm taking out the line out so i started stirring so the sol solution became orange color now i'm going to take my compound alcohol terminal alcohol and i'll di dissolve my compound in dcm so here i added dcm so first time i'll take the compound with the syringe with the help of a syringe now taking out the compound <clears throat> now i'm adding the compound here in the reaction system and you'll see this orange color solution will start turning black or blackish so initially uh, it will turn black slowly but ultimately the whole solution will be blackish because chromium 6 plus is orange color and chromium 4 plus will be black color so once the first time addition of the compound is done then i will use a little bit more dcm to rinse out my vial to take all of the compound and then i will uh, add again the second portion so here i'm dissolving like uh, from the vial and i'm taking the whole thing yeah i dissolve it here and taking the compound out yep once it is done then i have taken the compound and i'm adding this and once the addition is done then i'll take out both extra syringe with the needle and i'll throw throw it in a sharp container once it is done so you can see the reaction become black now i'm adjusting the stirring plate to stir with the magnet so while it is stirring i can also see the reaction is happening with the oil bubbler you can see the bubble is forming while the gas is off but it's still bubble is forming that means the reaction is uh, proceeding after two hours of the stirring of this reaction at room temperature i am going to add ethyl ether diethyl ether to quench the reaction so here i am removing the gas uh, line and i am taking out the reaction flask and then i will take out the rubber septa and i am gonna add now the diethyl ether in the reaction and you can see the color change once you add the diethyl ether in this reaction so the reaction is getting quenched and i will shake it like this like so early it and after that i will make a system filtration system so i'll take a uh, vlc type vacuum liquid chromatographic uh, apparatus if you don't 
see my previous video on PLC or vacuum liquid chromatography you can see that so similar setup I will use and I will use some hexen also in this system and then first with the DCM part I already poured in there and this this container only silica so I'm filtering because chromium uh, black uh, chromium 4 black compound will really stuck in the silica now I'm adding more hexen so um, and washing with the hexen and definitely I will add little bit DCM and hexen um, mostly hexen but maybe 10 to 20 percent DCM and then I will filter it so here maybe let's do another wash little bit DCM not too much and then measure amount of the hexen so I'll add here and I'll filter it again so I'll wash couple of times with this kind of mixture like maybe 20 to 30 percent DCM in hexen once it is done then I will do the uh, roto web to remove the solvent to get the compound as a crude so here um, I already collected so I will do the roto web and that's it so if you like my video and please give me like and subscribe thank you bye now